You're listening to episode number 33 of the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. In this episode, the first time that I've done it here is I have a guest. And the reason that I have a guest is because having this guest demonstrates today's topic. Today's topic is what's called AINI. A-Y-N-I is the word. AINI is ancient Incan, and it means the reciprocity of life. Today's guest is a very, very good friend of mine. We've been on vacation before. I mean, he's been a guest in my home, one of my best friends. Today's guest is Mr. James Wedmore. Now, James and I, we played a huge role in each other's lives. When we met a couple of years ago, we didn't recognize that we were going to be entering into an INI reciprocity of life relationship. I would not actually be doing the podcast at the level that I'm doing it, most likely, had I not met James. And James's business would not be where it is, most likely, had James not met me. When we met, actually, I was looking to expand and get back, you know, back out in the world uh, because I took several years off and get more exposure, which James provided to me. And James was looking for ways to grow his business. And I helped him do that through our one-to-one coaching, where he himself started transforming his life from the inside out. So we served each other. And in this podcast, we talk about in depth the concept of Aini and giving with an open heart. Enjoy. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. Okay, guys, um, as you know, I've never had a guest here at the Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. And I've got a very special guest. I've got a guest that's a really, really good friend of mine, been a mentor in some ways, especially with internet marketing. And my first and only guest is Mr. James Wedmore. Wow, first guest. Wait, did you, did you change the name? I, Transform Your Life podcast? Is that what you call it? Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. Okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, because that's what I do, you know? I know. And they don't know yet. And I think you know the topic because I slipped one day and told you, but they don't know the topic today. I don't and really know the topic that well. I mean, you, you can really, me, but yeah. The topic is how to skydive. Uh, oh, uh, 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 I and did guys, that. I don't like it. No, thank you. Not so for guys, that's, that's an inside joke because uh, when he came to Dallas one time to visit, I was going to surprise him with skydiving. And he's like, why would I jump out of a perfectly good airplane? <laughs> airplane? <laughs> so, but for those that don't know you, just very, very quickly here is that James is, I don't know if you've ever thought about this, Hmm. But you were literally in the top 1% of internet marketers in terms of the success that you created. Literally, when you look at your numbers, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So guys, he's one of the most successful. Um, do you like the word internet marketer? Is that a word that works for you or no? Um, no, I, I, I'm very neutral to it, but I, I don't use that word my, myself, but I, I think it, it, it helps for context. Helps okay. For so. Okay, well, let's do this. He's one of the most successful in-context internet marketers in the world. No question about it. Uh, top of the industry. And the reason that I asked James on this particular episode is not about James, but it's, it's the way that I see James being and one of the things that I've always liked best about him. Mm. There was a lady years ago here in Dallas that I coached and she became my mentor. Her name was Virginia Cook. Now she's 80, but she owned one of the largest real estate companies in the United States. And the very first day I had lunch with her, I said, how did you build your business so quickly? Because she had this, uh, she was president of a large company for many years. She left and started her own when she was 60. By 70, it was the second largest private real estate company in Texas. And when we had lunch, and I'll bring this back to you and the listeners, when we had lunch, I said, how did you build so quickly? And she goes, oh, that's easy. Love, care, concern, and giving. 
It wasn't marketing strategies, name recognition. It wasn't any of that. So today's episode is about giving, but it's about a word that you've heard before and you've heard me use is Aini, A-Y-N-I. And Aini is ancient Incan for the reciprocity of life. And aside from this woman, I have never seen somebody be more giving with an open heart, with no ulterior motive than you. I mean, that's the way that you operate your business. So that's one aspect of you here today. And I want to talk about Aini and how you use it. But secondly, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing at the level that I am doing it without episode 114, which was an episode with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, remember I remember when I got off that call with you because we didn't really know each other that much. Yeah. We Facebook messaged a few times and uh, I'll take total credit that the episode was my idea because <laughs> you were you were in a group and you were yeah. you were like it it seemed like doing, you know, asking some questions like, hey, right. I'm considering teaching more about these couple of things that I know really well. Right. And everyone was like leaning towards option one. And I was like the one person was like, no, this one right here. And and then I reached out and was like, we got to do this episode. Um, I got to just get you on my podcast. And I remember getting off the episode and just like running out to the team. And I'm like, this is going to be the best episode we've ever done yet. And, and now it's like your number yeah, one yeah, guest downloaded. downloaded. Episode. Yeah. I mean, I make it like part of a, you know, like st the staple for like new subscribers that come into my audience and like into my programs. It's like, Hey, this is one of the foundational pieces. Cause I just think it, it encapsulated so much that's, that's relevant to us, uh, especially as entrepreneurs. Well, and now we look back a year and a half later, we go to Sedona together because you want to buy a house and then I end up buying a house there and you have it yet. And then you come to oh, Dallas. Kind of rub that in, huh? Yeah. And then you come to Dallas and stay at my house. Now we ended up friends and I'm like, okay, if I have to, then I'll do it. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, 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 what I want to look at is I'm going to ask you an open ended question and who knows where it's going to go. Mm -hmm. But I've always seen you operate from Aini. And as I mentioned, guys, Aini is ancient Incan for the reciprocity of life, which is one of, the, one of the most significant laws of life. James, I see so many people, and just take this where you want to go in a second, so many people that want to create and want to build, but they want to get instead of giving. Hmm. So what's your whole thought process, your mindset around this? Where does this come from in you? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, I think... There's a, there, it is an open-ended question. I could go in a few places, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you something that was a really great realization for me is that, you know, we live in this really exciting time where there's so many opportunities to, to make money. You know, I heard some stat, who knows if it's true, but there's over like a thousand millionaires being created every day now. Like, mm. I don't, I mean, that's amazing. Right. Um, and I remember trying other businesses and I'm like, uh, not to brag, but like, I'm a, I'm a smart guy. I can figure out stuff. Like I figured out tech and I learned programming and all these things. And so I had all these options in front of me, um, like an Amazon business, a software company. I, I, I've, I've moved in the direction of those companies. I've, I've built iPhone apps and other, other like, uh, like paid advertising agencies and they all came with like, Oh, big money, you know, pot of gold at the end of this rainbow. Um, I mean, I know people have built seven, multi seven figure Amazon businesses, mm -hmm. but like none of them like sang to me, none, none of them like, like, you know, like my, I, my heart wasn't in it. And anytime I came back to like teaching or coaching or just like helping somebody in some way, I, I, I just fell in love with it and I really enjoyed it. And then of course, those are the things that I ended up completing and, uh, and then making money from. And so that gave me a realization of just like how important it is. I just didn't realize that about myself that it's like, Oh, that I'm doing work that's helping people. Um, because it gave me meaning and fulfillment and, um, yeah, it has, it has made me a lot of money. And even today, one of the driving motivators for me to make more money is simply because I want to show more people proof of what's possible. Okay. And that, that I think is like the, the ultimate thing for me is like, I needed a lot of that. I needed a lot of proof, right? You know, like the whole like Roger Bannister thing, like once, once he did the four minute mile, like, oh, I can do it too. I needed a lot of that in my journey. And it's a really exciting idea to be like, wow, I could be, I could be that for somebody else today that they could say, well, if this James guy did it, I, I can too. Okay. So, so, so yeah. what I hear you saying here is, well, let me go back here and ask you another question and a follow-up to that. 
is what I hear you saying is that even though you can make money in those other things, this is more purposeful to you. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Like I felt like it, it and now just putting it in the context of, of Aini, it was like, oh, this is things that has me help more, give more, share more and, and make a bigger difference. It's, and it's like the way that I feel like I could truly help. And I, I mean, if you're asking for a logical, you know, rational explanation, I, I can't other than like, it's just what I feel called to do. Yeah. And, um, and it, and it, and at the end of the day, like it feels good. Like it always feels good to, to give more, to help more than it does to receive. And I was actually reflecting upon that when I got up this morning of like how much more when you're really present to it, like how much more truly enjoyable it is to, to give mm -hmm. when you're giving like uh, free, freely and without attachment and without expectation. And I think that's a big piece that it's important for us to to be mentioning here is how important this is to not do this with the like, well, Jim said that the strategy to making more money is to give first. So I'm going to give first so I can go make some more. Yeah. And doing that without attachment, s simply through just like inspired giving and sharing, you know, and just like no attachment, yeah. no expectation. You know me really well. So you probably heard me say before that most people don't give to give, they give to get. Yeah. Is you know what I want to be the servant leader, and 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 I hope people are really listening. That's a big deal because I want to bring this back to you in just a moment, um, and how I've seen you give to give, but most people, and especially see for those of you that don't know James, he runs a program called BBD Business by Design, and it's to help people that want to you know be digital CEOs build their their business their dreams, but I see so many people going into business because they want the financial reward of the business as opposed to the service of the business and helping other people. Then they're chasing the dollars and they've got, they've got the cart before the horse. And then they're wondering, well, how come I'm not making three, four or 500,000, a million a year? It's because they're working backwards. So let's go back here. I wrote something down for everyone listening, because you said that you, your joy is to give the gift. How important do you think purpose is in serving? Meaning, is it purposeful or we just do it to get something? No, I mean, I think it's, I think it's everything. I think it's one and the same, right? It's, um, yeah, and I, this, these have been like, these thoughts have been going through my mind for a few weeks. So it's really just fascinating how this all comes together. <laughs> yeah. It, it's, it's weird. It's like purpose is like finding your, your lane. You know, it's like, it, to me, it just feels like the fast lane in your life. And when you, when you get lined up with it, it's like, I guess kind of what I've been, what's been like coming up for me and ruminating in my mind is, is like, I, I really believe everyone's here for a reason. They have a, they have a, a, a purpose or a, or a function. And, you know, I think there was a time in my life where it was looking for what that is. And then, and you get to choose if, if you're going to operate from that or not. And yeah. the more I like sink deeper into that, like, you know, the, the more like sense of, yeah, fulfillment and, and um, alignment that you- okay, but, but let me interrupt here because yeah. I know you're on a time frame today. Yeah. What I want them to get is you coached, I don't know, I mean, with what you do, thousands and thousands and thousands of yeah, people. That's a lot, yeah. What's the difference in your observation between people who want to build a business or become financially free and they do it for the money as opposed to people doing it for the purpose and the service of it? Well, I'll say one, one thing that, comes up immediately from that question is that you and I both know that like if we're to speaking specifically to like a personal brand business where like you're the face you know you, you do coaching and teaching you know you're building an Instagram account and stuff um, things like your podcast and and what you talk about become um, required learning because all the stuff comes up right like all yeah. the self-sabotage all the weird, the worries, the fears, the anxieties, all the like, who am I to be doing this? What if they don't like it? What if they reject me? What if, what, 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 right? All that chatter. And the, that's where a lot of people then just stop and they give up. And uh, I've always loved to say and share, and, and it seems quite contrarian to most people that business is, is simple, especially this type of business. Business is extremely simple. It's attract your audience and sell them what they want. Um, but we, we're humans with all our humanness and all this stuff comes up. And so when you, to answer your question, when you look at somebody who is living from purpose, you realize that their purpose has to do with something that's bigger than themselves mm -hmm. and that 
every moment when they're getting into their stuff, it's a, it's a choice of, am I going to be in my little stuff about who am I, you know, and what, what am I, who am I to be doing this? And I'm not the best and I'm not the expert and right. all that stuff. Or are they going to choose to make it about something that's bigger than them and who they can serve? And when you're, you know, operating from that, it trumps any, any of that, the, the, that chatter and problems that you have. And, and I still have that, those days where it's like, oh, I don't know about this. And, you know, you hesitate or you, you know, you, you push back. I think that's actually something you really helped me with is like letting my full contrarian come out. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> and what was holding that back a little bit was still having a bit of a need of people to like me. Yep. And when you're operating from that, that purpose, you say, this isn't even a matter of needing anybody to like me. This is a matter of, I could be changing one person's life right now. And so when you're operating from purpose, it's like the big giant delete key on, you know, all our little fears and worries. Do, does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And so who's inspired you? Um, when you look at people that give and you watch them give, who inspires you? Oh my goodness. Um, well, you inspire me, Jim. Um, I'll, I'll give you five bucks for that later. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, you know, I think, um, you know, I think Tony Robbins was a huge inspiration for me, like back when I started. Yeah. And um, yeah, but I don't, I, it sounds really bizarre, bizarre, but I don't know if I would say like, I don't know. I, I, that for reasons, it's just so weird. Like little, like questions like that are sometimes really hard. Cause I don't, today I kind of just keep my head down. Do you do yeah. that? Like, no, I try to call you, but you never answer the phone because your head's down. Yeah. So, but you're I'm, very good at putting your, putting your head down or, when you're when in I'm surfing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And when you're surfing, yeah. well, let me ask you another question. I don't know. We have a mutual friend, uh, our, one of our brothers, Brandon, and you two guys that are programmed together, I guess five years ago or so. Yeah, we did. Uh, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And he told me that when you moved over to what you're doing, and I don't know if you've ever told me, I don't know if we ever talked about it, even though, you know, we've vacationed and stuff together, but you gave him every bit of that program. Yep. Well, that's, a, it goes right back to what we were talking about before. That was an example of a business that it still to this day was probably the most um, lucrative business that I've owned. It but, was, hang on, but hang on, they don't know this. Let's give them context. Yeah. You gave him what you co-created that I think... An, was already a seven figure business. Yeah. yeah. It, it had done multiple millions of dollars um, in the course of us owning it together. We created it together. I, he, the short, short version is the way Brandon and I connected is I was teaching YouTube and video marketing at the time and he was doing it for local businesses. He was getting paid to come in and do their videos. And I said, we need to create my, my customers are asking for how to do what you're doing. Let's partner up, create this product together. And it was wildly successful and um, like lucratively successful, like just financial. It was very successful. And I hated it. I hated it. I hated it because it was not aligned with the work I wanted to do. I didn't want to work with people that wanted to do that type, create that type of business. So I didn't enjoy it at all. And I think it, for me, it attracted a lot of people that were unfortunately only looking for a quick fix, you know, quick buck, quick opportunity. Sequence, yeah. yeah. Right. And, um, and so I, I, what was so important to me is that like purpose and alignment and that, and that joy and that, that fulfillment um, that I, I walked away from it and, and I didn't want to um, make any type of inconveniences to, to, to Brandon. So I just said like, if you want it, take it and run with it. And, and he did. This was probably what, three, three and a half years ago, I believe thereabouts. Yeah. And he called me one day and we we're talking and he goes, James, just, what was it? Video Academy or something? Local, local Video Academy. Yeah. LVA. And he goes, James gave me LVA. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? And it's like, he gave it. I'm like, what do you mean by gave? And he's like, gave. And I'm like, but aren't you, you know, isn't the business making millions a year? And don't you have a list of like 80,000 people or something like that? And he's like, yep. And he goes, James just gave it to me. Mm -hmm. Now, people that are hearing that right now, they're probably, why would somebody give away a multi-million dollar business or, or, or okay, a business that, can generate seven figures and has the foundation behind it, why would they air quote, just give it away? Now you did say you weren't passionate about it. Yeah. Okay. But the question is this, and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are thinking this, why didn't you sell it to him? Um, 
Well, I actually want to answer the other question. Why did I give it away? And my yeah. answer is because it was costing me more. It was in terms of, go ahead. Terms, sorry. In terms of happiness, alignment, peace, fulfillment. It was, and that's, that was more valuable than, than the money. Why I didn't sell it to him. Um, I would, I would say number one, because even just like, I don't know, it, it may just sound weird, but like, yeah, <laughs> Brandon's like one of my closest friends and I didn't want to go through that with a friend of like, well, now we got to get it evaluated and we got to get a broker involved and like, it's got to be official. And like, I wanted it to be, um, and you know, I didn't even know if he wanted me to step away. So like, in a sense, like I, I could be a big inconvenience for somebody who's like, dude, we're doing this together and you're just walking away. And now you're asking me to like, give you money for, you know, and I didn't want to put that. And that was like, I've had a lot of partnerships and, um, most of them failed. Um, that's a whole nother conversation we can have of like, do you really need a partnership? Well, hang on right there. Let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere yeah. with that. I've had a lot of partnerships also. And I tell people that you've got to be very, very careful in a partnership. Yes. And the, my observation is the reason why, and we'll take, we'll t turn this into Ine, is number one is that many people are in a partnership for what they can get as opposed to what they can give. Right. Have you found that in your experience? Um, absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and other things too, in terms of like not having a clear, um, drawn out delineation of like roles and responsibilities. And sometimes the value that one person brings, the other person ironically doesn't value that. Um, I've seen other partnerships that went awry where like the person, they, they were really good at bringing in partners or like JVs and affiliates, right. and, you know, networking and like being on talk shows, podcasts and all that type of stuff. And that's like the fun stuff. But it's also super high level, high value. Well, the other person's back at home, like building the whole thing, resentment, animosity, all that stuff builds up and, and, it, and it can end really badly. And that's so tragic. And Brandon, through this process, became such a great friend. At the end of the day, I said, my, my friendship, it wasn't, even, it wasn't even a conversation I had to talk about in my mind. It was like clearly as a like statement of fact, my friendship is far more important than, you know, like a couple of pennies. Um, and so, or a million. Yeah. Yeah. Or a million. <laughs> now, um, Brandon, you got to listen to this. You can hear what his friendship means to you. Yeah. Seriously. But, bro. <laughs> you, you owe me. Come on. Uh, you, you know, you and I both know Brandon doesn't listen to your podcast. I know. I know. But he acts like he, he does. doesn't listen to anything you say. <laughs> I know. I, I've been his coach. So I don't know. But let me ask you this. Let's talk about giving to yourself. When we were in Alston, I'm not Alston. When we were, when we were in Sedona back um, at Christmas time, looking for homes, you know, and you and Chelsea were there. Yeah. We had dinner and you've never, even though I've known you for a while and we go on vacation together, you had never told me the story about you going to Alston. Remember that very first trip years ago or wherever it was you went to the first, first mastermind you couldn't afford. It was $12,000 or whatever. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. San Antonio. Yes. Okay. Yes. So yeah. I want to talk about if we can tie this into giving about giving to yourself by giving yourself that trip, even though you couldn't afford it. Can you unpack that in some way and explain um, and maybe tie it in the INE? <laughs> well, yes. And I will say like, let's just get into that. Cause wow. Even just talking about INE and giving to yourself, I think that's something that I struggled with for a very long time. Okay. Uh, you know, all the self-worth, self-love things. Um, you had recommended a book to me, mm -hmm. uh, love yourself like your life depends on it, mm -hmm. um, which I read, you know, just devoured um, and realized that, I wasn't, you know, loving myself as much as I could. I wasn't giving to myself as much as I, I could. And I think that's hard for, I can be really hard for a lot of people. I, I, you know, it was, it was a struggle for me, but yeah. So that example was, um, if, if I'm referring to the correct story was, uh, I was part of my first mastermind when I was just getting started. Um, before I do what I do now and before I was teaching video, I was teaching yeah. a course on online, uh, how to bartend online. Um, and it didn't make very much money. I think like $200 a week was how much I was making, which I was stoked by. So I paid for this mastermind that was $18,000 that I didn't have. Um, so my payments were like, I think they came down to like 12, 1400 bucks a month or something like that. And that's like, that was every penny, every single month. And uh, so I couldn't even, one of the mastermind events uh, was in Texas and I couldn't even afford a plane ticket. So I, <laughs> so I drove. Um, and luckily I had won a car in a contest, uh, for six months, uh, Ford Fiesta. And I drove 26 straight hours so that I could be 
at that uh, event for two days and then just turned around and drove right back home. Now, hang on. I want to come back to your story, but isn't it interesting that you want a car that would get you to where you wanted to go? And then I look at here, you know what? We get in life what we give. That is so simple that pretty much almost all of us miss is that we all want things. Many people want money and success, but they don't want to give it first. It's yeah. like telling a, a fireplace, tell you what, give me fire, then I'll toss send wood, which is a violation of I&E. So have you ever thought about there's a reason that there's something that you did prior because the winning the car was the effect. Have you ever thought there's something that you gave prior that put that car on your path? No, no, because this was so long ago, Jim, that I didn't have any context for any of what you're talking about now. This was so long. This was, yeah. this was um, 10, 11. This was 2008. So 11 years ago. Yeah, you know, I was... Um, any of the stuff that you talk about in your podcast, I was com not just completely oblivious to, I think I was uh, staunchly against it. Um, I got my, my first, my, my mom, my wonderful mother tried so hard to um, open me up to some of this stuff. And she gave me for my birthday, I think it was, uh, Abraham Hicks asking it was given. I read mm -hmm. the first, like the prologue and it talks about channeling this thing. And I said, Nope. And I threw it in <laughs> the garbage in front of her. Like what a jerk I was. I was just like, do not give me this garbage. I need to get back to hustling. Cause that's what it takes. And I was doing 14 hour days. I don't, I don't know how much I told you about this, but that back to, then I got addicted to Adderall, which, you know, I was like, Adderall is amazing. It's, you know, you just work for 14 hours straight with all the energy, focus and clarity, but you don't eat. You don't, <laughs> sleep. I lost, like I dropped down to 145 pounds. I look like a skeleton. I lost all my, my friends, my girlfriend broke up with me. And I was just like living in my parents' basement, working 14, 16 hour days. I'd roll out of bed in the morning at eight and I'd be there until like one, one in the morning working yep. and no progress, no, nothing, no growth, no, no success came from that. And, um, it wasn't until you hit that kind of like brick wall of, of burnout. You're like, what's it going to, what would it hurt to, you know, what's going to cost me to try a different approach, a different, look for different avenues. And, um, but hang on there. So, because they're going to wonder where I opened the loop about you going to Austin and we're not in Austin yet. So sure. they're going to wonder about that. Yeah. So what's your interpretation of, did, as you look at it now, do you recognize that by even not being able to afford it, you were give, you pro, I don't know if, where you'd be today without that experience. Who knows? But do you recognize that even though that you thought you couldn't afford it, you gave yourself that opportunity? No, I don't recognize it until you just bring it up right now. <laughs> I'm being <laughs> honest with you. Yeah, like um, I, that's kind of a realization for me in this, in this moment. Um, you know, like I, I just think for me when it um, – I mean, you brought a lot of great distinctions and awareness to, to me that I didn't realize, which is always just a great gift. But um, when it came to business, I always had a commitment. I was like, I always had a decision in my mind that, um, yeah, this is going to work. Um, and I'm, I'm going to be successful at it. I don't know how long it's going to take, but I'm willing to do whatever it takes. Okay. And at that time, it was, if it means getting in a car and driving for 26 hours straight, um, like sleep, not sleeping and, and whatnot, like I'm going to do it. So, okay. So what was your driver then? Was it my, okay. Is that what I see a lot of? Okay. And yeah. you, you probably see a lot of this also is I see a lot of people that they start their business and they do it first for themselves. I yes. want the freedom. I want the money. And then what I see happening to a lot of people is once they start making a little money, doesn't happen to everyone, but a lot of people, they start shifting and they start thinking about, well, whoa, okay. Now what can I do in the world? Did yes. that apply to you as well? That, like you wouldn't believe. So again, that story that you're referring to is 2008, right? Yeah. And I was still struggling then, 2008, 2009, 2010, by the end of 2011. Okay, so I've been, do, been trying this at this game for over four and a half years at this point. And in 2011, I finally make a break. And I partnered with uh, an individual that some people here might know named Lewis Howes. Mm -hmm. we'd, been, we'd become close friends, actually from that same mastermind four years earlier. And we had stayed in touch and we decided to create a product together called Video Traffic Academy. And in September of 2011, we launched this $97 course and did over $400,000 in less than 30 days. And it was like everything that I had been just yearning for, like so hungry for, so committed for, and for four and a half years came flooding into my existence within a matter of days. And I hit 
like this massive, what I would only call today, like a depression. Like I, I, I hit a different kind of bottom and, um, like where I couldn't get off my couch. I started, you know, like smoking a bunch of pot and drinking and just like no motivation. It was like, it was all gone. Um, no drive. And I, I, my yeah. interpretation from that experience as I look back in hindsight was that I realized how much meaning I had put on significance. I put on once I'd made it, what it's going to give me, who I'm finally going to be once I've made this money. And then when you make that money and nothing's changed and you're still the same, like insecure, you know, you know, kid full of self-loathing and whatnot. But you can buy more pot with more money, right? Exactly. Right. <laughs> Um, but nothing had changed. And, and that really, I think that really scared me. And, um, that was definitely when I started like looking into, you know, more than just like the 3d world of like what else is out there. But what got me out of that was when we launched this program about a month or two later, the testimonials started coming in. Mm. Someone would yeah. say, Holy cow, James's system works. I just got a new client and I got hit with something that I had never felt before. And I was like, what is this feeling? And then, and then boom, yeah, I just got this result or, oh, I just did this. And it, for me, I was like, I thought I was like discovering this like secret weapon because all of a sudden I had this like this juice. Um, and it was this feeling of just like excitement and empowerment because I had made a difference in somebody's life. And you gave, I, well, yeah. And yeah. I did. But see, that's the thing is I hadn't even realized that I had given. Yeah. Right. I was like, so focused on like, I got to sell this thing. And yeah, I put my heart and soul into it, but people were listening. People were receiving and you know, you can give and you, we can't, we can't expect, um, or, or actually have any control that they they'll receive it. Right. So you have to give even, even accepting the fact that they may not receive it at all. Like how many times Jim, have you, you know, shared and poured your heart out to somebody and you're like, they, they may not do anything with that. They may not have received that. That's our friend, Brandon, when I coach him. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you said it, not me. No, I did. And I said it live in front of people as well. But if he knew how many people were going to listen to this, and I'm going to make him listen. But yeah, yeah, I get that. So let me ask you this, because uh, my following is a lot like yours. It's a lot of entrepreneurs, business people. A lot of awesome people, yeah. A lot of awesome people, absolutely. And literally, it's a lot of people trying to do something in the world. Is what do you think the challenge is when they, when they work from, I've got to sell something as opposed to, I want to help people and serve people in your mind, what you, because you see this all the time, all these people that you work with, if, if, okay, let's classify this. Would you say, and I'm just being very general, but would you say when you watch people that are working from how many people can I help? Now I want to add here, everyone yeah. listening, because they've heard of the podcast of mine. You also have to have prosperity consciousness. You have to have money mindset. You have to value money. Yes. Otherwise, you can help people all day long and you ain't going to make any money. Yes. Because that's part of the component. But when you see people and their success levels and you actually have a seven-figure mastermind, what observations do you make about people that make a lot more money than people that oh. don't when it comes to giving? Oh, okay. Well, wait, so you're asking me a few questions. I really want to answer yeah. both of these. So I, I, let, I definitely want to get to that because we actually just had this conversation because I run a mastermind with six figure people, um, people anywhere from about 250K up to 999K yep. in, in annual revenue. And then we have a seven figure group where people are at a million all the way to like about 6 million. Um, so I'm going to answer that. The yep. difference there in just a moment. But to answer the other question of like the difference between like someone who's like, I want to, I got to sell versus I got to help. Um, here's my perspective on this. What really helped me and yes, absolutely. Prosperity consciousness is, is, uh, so imperative, but why do these have to be mutually exclusive? Why is this either, or what if we could approach this as selling is helping, you know, selling is service. And that's mm -hmm. one of the things that I say to all of my my students is the transformation begins with the transaction because, you know, especially when it comes to somebody wants to help with teaching a methodology, your message, your, your framework, your coaching is that that commitment, that decision to put skin in the game, to say yes to yourself is probably what's been lacking in their life, which has been a major uh, component in causing the problem in the first place. And so when you make a sale to somebody, you're actually creating that environment forcing them to make a decision, not forcing them to say yes, not forcing them to hand you money, but forcing them to make a decision. 
and, and they've probably not been making a decision at all. They've been procrastinating one day, someday, you know, et cetera. And so what really helped me long ago was looking at selling as a way of helping and saying, if I want to help more people, I've got to get this program in front of more hands. I got to get more people committed. I got to get more people signed up. I got to get more people to put skin in the game so we can get to work. And look, the, the, the facts are here. Anybody could argue it, but the facts are here. I have a, a YouTube channel with 13.5 million views. Um, I have, uh, my podcast is now over 3 million downloads. I don't know how many blog posts I've done and articles and, you know, all this stuff. This is all free content that anybody could go access. But 99% of the case studies, the transformations, the, the, the testimonials, they come from paying customers. Why? Because transformation begins with the transaction. They got, they got committed. Now, hang, hang on. And I hope everyone hears what he's just saying because he's actually helped thousands of people. And a lot of people actually, here's to go back to this. A lot of people want to help, but they have what I call the social worker mentality. Let me just go help everyone. Well, everyone doesn't want to be helped. And you know what? <laughs> if they have, they don't. Yep. And if they don't have skin in the game, they're not going to do anything differently. But let me go to add something here because this is a big thing. And you see a lot of this, and you know that I've taught persuasion and influence for a lot of years is that I tell people that if you can help people in some way improve their life and go to a higher state, you have an ethical obligation to at least offer what you can do to assist those people. If they don't want it, that's fine. But you know what? If you're not offering them a way to go to a higher level in life, then I don't think you're being fair to either them or to yourself. And the only difference I would make in the statement is you said if. And I, I truly believe, like, if you can help somebody, and I, I truly believe that no matter where you are right now, if the desire is there, you already can. There's somebody that you can yeah. help from the level you're at. And why I think it's important for me to, to share that is I think people are under this, um, this idea or this belief that if they, I want to help, but I'm not ready yet. Yeah. I have to go out and get another certification, uh, another course. I got to learn something else that I haven't yet learned so that I can start. And again, that's the whole, um, you know, have to be right. Like once yeah. I have another, once I have, yeah. and it, a lot of it comes down to permission right? Like once I have permission and I had to learn that a long time ago, that's what took me four and a half years to figure out is that, um, uh, I was operating from a permission based mindset that I needed permission to do what I wanted to do. Well, hang on. Let me interrupt you here because timing, I know you've got something on the hour is let's go, let's go back to Austin. Remember? And the lady said, your coat, the person running the mastermind said, who said you could do that? Yeah, that was a, that was a, I, I share this story on stage. That was a, that was a, a, a blow. I'd finally built up the courage. Big, big insecurities <laughs> back then. I really had a lot of insecurities. Finally built up the courage to put out my first video course. And um, I got an email from the, the person that I paid to be my coach. And they said, well, who said you could do this? There's already somebody in this group doing something similar. I can't have somebody else do it. I was so devastated and embarrassed. Shame. I just covered myself in, in a shame sandwich. Like just so embarrassed that I took it all down. I, I had spent like two, three months building out all of this, like 12 hour days. And in, and in 30 seconds, I took it all down because someone didn't give me permission. Now I don't blame them. I have no, what a gift. Like I learned so much. Right. From that. I realized like, wait a second, like what kind of life am I going to lead if every person tells me what I can or cannot do? And, um, and I think most people are living their life that way. And I think that keeps us in a, in a prison that we don't even realize that uh, we were in and we have the freaking keys to it. And um, yeah, that was, that was a really great lesson for me. It took me a while to actually learn it, but um, I'm very grateful for it. Yeah. And you see a lot of that. And let me go back here. If I get my train of thought is what I tell people in my coaching programs is no matter where you are, there's somebody ahead of you and there's somebody behind you. Yes. You know what? Somebody behind you, even if you've been doing this three weeks, there's only, there's been somebody doing it one day that wants to learn from you. But so many people say, well, I can't, because they want to give, I, I can't go out and help people. I'm not an expert yet. And what I tell people is that there are no experts, even though we're looked at as experts of what we do. There's no experts because research shows that experts are wrong 20% of the time, <laughs> which means there's only informed opinions or educated opinions, you know? So I tell people, uh, this is what I do in one of the later modules of my coaching is forget everything else. Because I learned this from this woman I told you about that I started that you remind me of. Mm -hmm. Back in 2009, when the economy came down, and this woman's extremely successful. I mean, her, her company 
Um, she's shutting it down because she's 80. But at the height of the company, it was the size of Barbara Corcoran's on Shark Tank. Wow. And in 2009, when the economy came down in 10, she goes, so many of my agents are just complaining about how bad the economy is. She goes, if they would just shut up and go help somebody today, they would make six figures this year. Yes. Yes. And you um, get that. You're not, you're, but this is, this is, this oh, is yeah. video and audio and you're nodding your head going, Oh my God, I get that. Well, well, well and, and here's the thing is like people, um, things change really fast in our industry, right? Like you have things yeah. like, Oh, Facebook took bots away or Facebook ads are changing and people really freak out. And they're like, Oh my goodness, my business is going to go under. And the fact of the matter is, is you, when you realize the business that you're really in, which is the business of solving problems, the business of helping people, problems will never go away. We're never, I, I mean, yeah. maybe, I'd like to ideally believe that one day we'll all just become this enlightened uh, <laughs> on the planet where like we just dissolve all of our problems, but that's most likely not going to happen. So as long as problems exist on, on the planet, there's going to be a need for somebody to go and solve them. And the, and the, and the, the target, it's a moving target. It changes, but, but that will never go away. Um, did you read the book, um, the war on art? No. Oh, well, you, you, you sent me some I stuff. On, passage yeah. of it and wow, yeah. I feel like a dumb, dumb that I never read it. Um, and you, you know, I, I was like, wow, I really wish I had this book 10 years ago. It talks a lot about resistance and the inner like self critic when it comes to like art and your craft. Like if you're a writer or a painter and stuff like this, but it always applies to entrepreneurs. And they talk about this because you, you mentioned like the, the belief that comes up for somebody when they say, well, this person's been doing it longer. Or this person's more of an expert or they know more. And it, and he, Great, it's this great distinction of like the whole concept of hierarchy is a, is a, is a manifestation of the ego. Yeah. A true artist doesn't concern himself or herself with the pecking order of who's number one, who's number two, who's number three. F that. And, you know, I, I've had to do that. that. I think that's very important to us is like, that's why I, I keep my, my head down is I don't concern myself with the illusion of competition or what everyone else is doing and what that could mean about, about me. It's like, I'm just doing what I'm here to do and what I love doing. And I'm going to do it regardless of, of whatever anybody else is doing and, um, and, and help people. <laughs> so hang on. So, so, so Picasso didn't say he didn't compare Picasso didn't say back in the twenties or thirties, I can't put this picture out because I have both of her eyes on the same side of the head and nobody does it that way. Right. Exactly. Right. He just did what he did and he did his art. Let me go back here. Uh, for those of you that do know James and I, and a lot might not know James yet and do now, is we are like, we buy tons of crystals. Every time we go to Sedona, we, I think you and I blew 5,000 bucks together in that store back at Christmas, literally. That's not, and that's not an exaggeration either. It's, well, no, it's not. I mean, we spent probably five grand together in that one store one afternoon. But I was in Sedona years ago, and I was buying a lot of crystals. Every time we walk into a store, they see us coming. And you and I said to speak and people like us. And I remember buying a lot of crystals and I was like, whoa, I'm buying a lot of crystals. And it dawned on me just boom, just like that. I said, as long as there are people in the world that I can help, I will never be without money. Exactly. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, um, and the alternative is that you're always worrying that the, the other shoe is going to drop. You like know? when, when's it going to run out? Right. Exactly. Yeah. And I've been there. I've been through all that. I used to have a reoccurring dream of a, of an airplane crashing right in front of me. <laughs> and I really took that to believe as a metaphor that there was a giant fear that my business was going to come crashing down. And you helped me a lot through that. Yeah. You, our first call, our so, first coaching call. It was like so stupid, simple. It was like, well, has it, has it crashed down so far? I'm like, no. And like, how long have you been doing this? I was like nine years. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> so you know, and you've been, and that's the craziest thing. It's like, and it hasn't crashed yet. Like it was like the fact that it hasn't crashed yet. And you've been worrying about it incessantly. Like imagine what happens when you just stop the worry. And, um, you know, I, I've, I don't know how much you've told your listeners up until this point, but like I had a huge growth explosion since working with you. We went from two to 3 million. Um, yeah. In the last quarter, we had an additional million dollars in revenue. And then the very next year, took the business from three to over eight million. And uh, we're on track for 10 this year. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you bought a house. Bought a house. And now we're looking for our, um, our dream house. Like, oh my gosh, like we just wake up every day with like joy in our hearts. So this place is like, it was like meant for us. Like, that's what it feels like. It's so. Yeah. 
Perfect. And we went, and we went to Sedona. We were talking about budget on houses. When you were look, we went to, to go with you because you were looking, and then we end up buying. But yeah. I said, "What's your budget?" And you're like, "Well, I don't, I don't know. When I see what I want." And yeah. let me let me go there for a second, and we'll wrap up with a final question for but, you. But but don't forget, we we want to know the difference between the six figure and seven figure. I have an oh, answer. Yes, go back, go back then. Yeah. Okay. So really simple because I bring my coaches to our masterminds. And so they were actually the ones that brought it to my attention. Um, and so, like I said, we had this group of the six figures, we had the group of the seven figures and they said, they came to me, the coaches came to me and like, we thought that the seven figure entrepreneurs were going to be talking about completely different stuff. They said, they deal with the same stuff that everybody else is doing. They talk about the same things, the same issues, the same problems. They said the one difference is they, they, they just get through it faster. Yeah. They don't spend as much time dwelling on it, waffling on it, uh, wavering, hesitating, worrying, freaking out. They just go, this is, this is an issue that's coming up. They receive the, okay, got it. Boom. And they go and they solve it. That's the only difference. And I think that's a very, it's such a simple, subtle thing, but it's so important because we tend to think that everyone else that has more money and more following, more fame has, is living the happily ever after that problems cease to exist in your life and uh, whatnot. It's like, no, they just got better at, solving problems and taking action and moving forward and not dwelling on it and giving it a bunch of energy that's completely unnecessary. So it's that simple. Well, so let me, let me add there. So obviously in our time together, look where your business has gone back when we, you know, we're coaching formula, uh, formally. Mm -hmm. And what I told some people about you is that you're one of the easiest people that I've ever coached because some people, and these are the distinctions that I noticed because I coach multiple seven figure earners. Seven figure people, I'm like, okay, here's where we want to shift. And then obviously, you know, I use different processes to get people to shift. You're aware of that now. Seven figure earners are like, okay. Six figure earners are like, but I can't do that. And that's too hard. And yeah. let me tell you why. And eight things I've tried before that didn't work before. Seven figure people, they're not like that. They're like, boom, okay, done, next. And yeah. you were like that. And all the seven figure earners that I work with, um, they just do it. They, they just move right through things quickly. Okay. So let's see here. When was a time that you didn't have money, but you gave anyway? Um, let's see what comes up for me. Well, I think the, the initial like memory that popped into my mind was, um, this story that I've shared on my podcast where I wanted to get my girlfriend at the time, um, Tony Robbins tickets. This is 2008, 2009. And uh, I had $500 in my bank account and I call them up and they said, it's a thousand dollars for two tickets. Um, or you like buy one, you get one free or something like that. And I was like, oh, can it like, can I get a payment plan? And the woman laughed at me um, just like that. <laughs> Click, that <laughs> yeah, time, right? And I, right. And so I said, okay, well let me, um, like, I, I couldn't believe I couldn't do a payment plan. So let me go check my finances. And I had accidentally left my Google AdWords account on and it debited $500. I had less than a dollar in my bank account. And, um, this is, I mean, this, this was a bit, very big turning point for me in my life because first of all, I, I hit this like really devastated, like self-talk of like, how pathetic am I that I, I can't, I don't even have a dollar to my name. I live at home. So I have no expenses and I don't even have a dollar to my name to get my girlfriend a birthday gift. That's pathetic. But at the same time, what was such a gift out of that was I said, I can wallow in my self pity and beat myself all I want up. I all I want, but this isn't about me. This is about her. And I'm going to commit to getting her this gift because this is what she really wants. And that was the first time I used things like manif manifesting it with intention because I said, it was the first time in my life I broke this belief that the things that you want, whether it's what you want to give or what you want to receive, need to come from money. Everything before was like, well, if you have the money, you can make it happen, right? Yeah. Said, what if I don't need the money? What if I'm just there with her at this event because that's what she wants and I'm going to find a way to give it to her? And the short version is two days later, I'm playing tennis with a friend and she, I, she, we're just updating each other on our lives. She's like, what are you up to? And I'm like, I'm sitting there going, I really shouldn't be here right now because I'm broke. I need to be making some money. And she's like, well, what are you working on? I'm like, I'm actually doing videos for clients right now. I do their like promo videos. And she's like, will you do one for me? If you do, I'll give you Tony Robbins tickets. And I, I drop, I'm like chills through my whole body. I dropped my rack and I was like, what the F did you just say? And she's like, I work with a rep 
who for Tony Robbins and I got a bunch of extra Tony Robbins tickets. I'll barter with you. Are you interested? He's going to be in town in like three weeks. I'm like, I know I'm too broke to buy tickets. <laughs> and uh, long story short, I, you know, I, I, what I had at the time was my, was my craft and my service. I created a video for her. I fulfilled on my end. She gave me two tickets and we were there. And, um, that was beautiful for me because it did two things. It, it, it first, it, it showed me that I don't, it does, the path isn't just through money. I'll just make money. So then you can go buy mm -hmm. things and have things. But then also that I, what, what was powered me through that was that this was for somebody else and not for me. And mm. uh, you know, that I'm, I'm doing, I was doing that for her. Like that drove me. It was like, gosh, darn it. Like I, this is for her. She deserves this and I'm going to make this happen no matter what. And, uh, and I did. So, um, I hear a lot of our students, um, <clears throat> mine and yours both say that they've never been in other programs where the leader of the program, your programs or mine actually show up and actually give as much as we give. Yeah. What, what's your, and we'll keep this a little shorter because I've got a final question. What's your take on share, share, share with the listeners, what's your overall philosophy and how you approach your business and giving? Um, I, I think, um, you know, yes, like obviously I, I always know that it, it's going to come back tenfold, mm. uh, but I enjoy it. So I, I do it because I, I want to, and, um, and I really, I really love it. So I also know that, um, it makes a difference and it's helping. And, um, I also know as a business owner, the people that get the best results, they talk about it. Word of mouth is still going to be better than any Facebook ad campaign that you ever yeah. create. Right now, yeah. that's not what drives it, but that, you know, that still gives you peace of mind as a business owner to be like, yeah, this is the best use of my time. I also know that, you know, and I've learned this and heard this from you several times of how much like our students are modeling our behavior mm -hmm. much more than yeah. what we say. And so when they see how we show up for them, this whole idea of like, wow, they're now going to go do that for their people. And that you get to model yeah. that for them has me, has me really excited. Um, but also just like where I see the industry going, um, you know, we can both agree because we've both been in this industry a long time that the barrier of entry today has never been lower to create an online course or, yeah. you know, yeah. stuff like that. The technology, the ease, like even just building a little bit of an audience, like anybody can create a Facebook group today and get a hundred people in there in a, in a couple days. Anybody can. So the barrier of entry is lower than ever before. And of course that comes with the shadow side of things that more noise, more competition, more saturation, more sophistication in the marketplace. And where I think things are moving is we're reaching a, a problem of epidemic proportions that people are completely overwhelmed. Um, they are contented out. Yeah. I like to say course the F out. Yeah. And, um, if you really want to make a difference in somebody's life, like they don't want a course, they don't want content. They want results. Yeah. And I do believe that coaching is the difference that makes the difference um, in somebody's life. Like how many books have we read that we didn't take action on? Um, we all know that we need to work out and what foods we need to eat, but most of us don't, right? <laughs> you know, we, we yeah. don't. Um, we know what we need to do to build a business and most people don't. And so I do believe and you, you, I know you do, but like coaching is what makes the difference. And so I want to remain a leader in the industry. I want to be more of a leader in the industry by, by demonstrating that because I know that that's, that's where things are going anyways, is that people are willing to pay more to get higher touch, to get more coaching, to get more support, because they also know that they don't just need, you know, 10,000 hours more of videos and that that's yeah. going to change their lives. And, because, 74, and 74 bonuses tacked on that you'll never get to. Exactly. And here's, I know you wanted to go quick, but tough. Uh, one more thing. I have, I, we have a team of coaches, um, just, just like you, and I coach my coaches as well because I figured yeah. like, wow, if, if they get a transformation, they're gonna, it's going to have a ripple effect and they're going to go cause transformation. So they get coaching sessions with me. And I had one of them, um, who, she runs her own business as well, and we, did a, and we recorded it for all the other coaches to watch. It was a five and a half minute conversation. That was it. And she just sent me a voice chat this morning saying she just did her biggest launch ever. She did over $20,000 in sales with like a really small list. Mm -hmm. And she said, you have no idea 
the impact that five minute conversation had to completely turn around the energy of the launch and how I showed up. And I truly believe that if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have come nearly as close in the results and the impact that I've had. And that's what I'm talking about. So, um, for me, I just know it's, it's the difference that, that makes the difference. And so if that becomes my competitive advantage, but it's also something I love doing and it gives me meaning and fulfillment, like I'm going to do it as much as I possibly can. Because you love doing it. So that, like you said a couple of times, yeah. that, that, that's what people, fires you up. Yeah. Yes. And there are people that have like created a course or whatever, and they'll tell you, or they've told me and, um, like, I don't like teaching and oh, I'm so sick of everyone's stupid questions. And if I have to answer this question one more time, I'm just going to like, just throw my laptop across the room. And I said, then this probably isn't the right business for you. Yeah. It's going to go to the people that like love doing this, not the people that just want to make a quick buck. Let me add there. And I think that's where compassion comes in is because I get people that will ask the same question 24,000 times. And you know what? I have, I have probably been one of those people in, my, in, in the past also. So that's where compassion comes in. So I know uh, seeing your project manager, manager uh, wave at you there, but here's the thing. Put on my best announcer's voice. James, where can they find out more about you? Well, if you're, <laughs> since you're already listening to a podcast, like I'm always going to say, come, come hang out over on my podcast as well. And if we want to start on the episode that uh, Jim and I did together here, episode 114 of the Mind Your Business podcast, um, that would be a fantastic place um, to start because like that really was such an epic uh, awesome episode, but I do anywhere from one to three episodes a week. We do a case study every week where we take a look at extraordinary entrepreneurs that are doing extraordinary things. Um, we do a Monday episode where I just kind of talk about, you know, inner game and mental, emotional mindset of, of entrepreneurship. And then I do a Friday episode, which is, um, like real bite size business tips, things that are working for me in my business as we keep growing. Um, so that's always the, the best place to go. I'm also on Instagram a lot. And like, I love it when people send me a DM and talk to me. So don't hesitate. It's at James Wedmore. Um, I'm, we're leaning really heavily into Instagram, really enjoying it. So um, please connect with me over there. Um, you've got an open mic and an open floor on my platform. Is there anything else you want to share? Um, no, other than, um, this is just uh, really honored to be your first guest and to even consider having me. So, so thank you. Um, you've had a tremendous impact in my life. Um, like I, I would say more than, you know, but you know, yeah, yeah. you know, you know, yeah. um, it is, it is absolutely exciting that, um, yeah, we were able to have that reciprocity in our lives that, that, um, to give you more of a platform, more of a voice and, and more people that you can go on and change. And like, I, I think I told you this story, so I'll just wrap here is, um, I, I tell people, anybody who drives through Laguna beach, which is a t small town, it's like seven miles long, 20,000 people. If you go there on any given day, you're probably going to see me. Cause I'm like walking around the street in board shorts and barefoot with headphones on listening to a podcast or something like that. And sure enough, about a week ago, uh, someone stops and says, James Wedmore. And I'm like, yes, hi. And it was uh, a client that you had coached with. Yeah. And, um, and it was just so awesome. They're like, you know, just saying like, I just finished up with coaching with Jim and it was like the most amazing experience of my life and changed my life. And, um, you know, chances are, I didn't ask him, I should have, he found it through one of our episodes we did or, you know, something from what got created that, what, two years ago. Yeah. Um, it's, it's just been an exciting journey. So it's, it's really awesome to, to be here and share on your podcast. Well, thank you. And I want to add a final note there is, is James and I met each other and this is this whole, even our life to, uh, working together and friends and everything has been I need. Because when we met, we were both, air quote, needing something in life. We were both needing an intervention for the next level in life. And what's interesting is he brought the intervention that I needed, which is a bigger platform. And I brought the intervention that he needed, which was our time together in one-to-one -one coaching, which mm -hmm. took you to a higher level. Yes. So we both actually were looking for each other, even if we didn't know it. And we both have made a significant impact. And to me, that's I need. It's just giving with an open heart and seeing what you can do to build people around you. Because I tell people at the end of every coaching session, we live in a very tumultuous world and the world needs us. And the more that we can evolve and grow, the more that we can go out and we can impact the world. We can make a ripple effect like you're doing and make the world a better place. So my final, final comment is for everyone listening, if you're not following James, I trust him 100%. I've never had any guests because I don't want a lot of guests. I mean, I trust your integrity 
hundred percent that you're going to take people's best interest, have it at heart and help them build a better life and help more people. Mm. So if you're listening now, what I want you to do next is go over to his podcast. It'll be in the show notes as well. And what's your domain name? Just verbal. Um, for the podcast, it's mindyourbusinesspodcast.com. So well, you my, got my personal name is jameswebmore.com for my personal domain. So every one of you go follow his podcast because I promise you extreme value. All right, brother. I know you got things to do and thank you for being here with me and us today. And I'll catch you later, bro. Thank you, Jim. And thank you to everyone who's listening. Okay, brother. Bye-bye. Okay. So stay with me for just a second because before I tell you about the next episode, I want to share something else with you. And if you're an entrepreneur, you're definitely going to want to listen to this. So James has an extremely valuable video series coming up in a few weeks. And I highly, and I mean highly recommend that you watch the video series if you're looking to scale your business. Not only that, I'm going to be doing an addendum to his video series. You know, as you may or may not know, I've taught persuasion and influence for a lot of years. So I'm going to be doing an addendum free training also to the training that he's doing. So you can sign up at jimforton.com slash James Wedmore training. And you know what? It's really easy. Just if you've not been to jimforton.com, just go there and sign up in the show notes. And you can also find the link um, in the show notes as I just mentioned, but also in my Instagram bio, which is I am Jim Fortin. All right. Like I said, again, whatever you do, if you're an entrepreneur and especially an online marketer, or you sell or you produce anything online, whatever you do, you're going to want to be, or you're going to want to watch his video training and be on mine. Okay, the next episode is a Q&A with Rocco. And the question that he wrote is, how can you commit to your goal if you don't even know what your goal is in the first place? So I'm looking forward to answering that, and I'll catch you over on the next episode. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions.